Hi everybody, it's Parker from TestProChampions.com and I'm back with another GED Math Problem of the Day. And if you found my problems recently easy, then hopefully this one will be a good challenge for you. I want you to solve this equation by factoring 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Go ahead, pause the video, try this out, and note that I said to do it by factoring. Don't use the quadratic equation, you got to do it by factoring. And so try this out, then we'll go over it. Okay. So we're back here. Hopefully you got a chance to pause the video and try this on your own. And so first of all, hopefully you understand that this is a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation is going to always be in this form. And you'll be given this equation for your test, but this is really, 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 really important to know. So the general form of a quadratic equation is going to be x squared, or it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus C. Okay, so what we have here, our 2 is going to be the A, and our negative 5 is going to be, is like our B term, and negative 12 is like the C term. So you just have to, first of all, recognize this is a quadratic equation, and so now we're going to factor it. And factoring is kind of tricky. It's not really that hard. There's different ways to do it, and, um, but I'm going to show you the way that I teach it, and if it gets a little bit confusing, that's okay. I'll go over how to do it, and I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions as we go along here. And so the first step is to, and again, this is just the way I teach it. There's other ways to do it, and of course, you can always use the, there's a formula to solve this that I'll go over in another video, but I just want you to do it by factoring because it's a good practice for the test. So the first step is to multiply the first number and the last number together. So we're going to do, we're going to start by doing 2 times negative 12. Okay, so 2 times negative 12 is going to give us negative 24. Okay, so now that we've got negative 24, we want to pay attention to the B term, which is negative 5. So we want to find two numbers that are going to multiply together to give us negative 24, but that are going to also add together to give us negative 5. And so the best way to do this is to just start listing pairs of numbers that are going to multiply together to be negative 24. And then as soon as you get one that's going to add up to be negative 5, then you're good to stop. So let's just think of some things here off the top of our head that will multiply together to give us negative 24. So what about two? and negative 12. That will work. And also, we can do negative 2 times 12. Okay, what's another pair here? What about 4 and negative 6? 4 and negative 6 will multiply together to give us negative 24, and we can also do negative 4 and 6. Okay, and then what about what about 8 and negative 3? So we've got 8 and negative 3, and then we also have, we can also switch this and we can do negative 8 and 3. Okay, and so the whole point here is to just list combinations of numbers that will multiply together to give us negative 24. Now we could do something like 1 and negative 24, or we could do 1 and negative 24 and negative 24 and 1, but that's going to waste our time because it's not going to add up to be 5. Okay, so hopefully what you see here is that negative 8 and 3 are going to add up to give us 5, right? So this is really the ticket here because we have, if we do negative 8 plus 3, we get negative 5. Okay, so we, this is what we were really interested in finding. So we've got our golden ticket here with negative 8 and 3. And so then, okay, so that's going to be our first two steps. And so then the next step is we're going to go back and pay attention to the A term here. And so the A term in our equation is going to be this 2, right? The 2 is our A term. And so now what I want you to do is divide both of these numbers by 2 and try to simplify if you can. And I'll explain why we're doing this. You could do this step, you could do this in a little different order, but this is the step that I want you to do next. I think it's easier and I'll explain why. So you would do negative 2 and you would divide that by 2, okay, which is going to give you negative 4. And then let's do it with the 3 as well. And so here we're going to hit a little bit of an issue because we can't really simplify that. So we'll just do 3 divided by 2, 
and we're just going to leave that here. Okay, so we've got negative 4 and we've got 3 divided by 2. So now what I want you to do is you're going to write an x and then you're going to put each of these terms. So what I mean is we do x minus 4, okay, and then we're also going to write x plus 3 over 2. Okay, and so we're almost done with the question here. Um, but why why did I have you divide by 2 before we got to the step? Well, otherwise, let's say that we had skipped that step and we hadn't divided both of these by 2. This is what we would have. We would have 2x minus 8. And we would also have 2x plus 3. And so then let's say we wanted to do a simplification here and we wanted to, let's say we divide 2 out of each term here. So we would do, let's divide out of 2, divide out of 2. So 2x divided by 2 is just going to be x. Eight mi negative 8 divided by 2 is going to be negative 4, so we'd have x minus 4. Okay, so then 2x divided by 2 is going to be just x. And then, again, 3 divided by 2, we would just leave that as 3 over 2. Okay, so as you can see, I just had to skip that step because I think it's easier to just, when you find the, when you find the numbers in the pair that are going to multiply together to give you negative 24 and add up to be negative 5, I think it's easier to just find the A term and just divide them both by that. Um, but, again, you can also, you don't have to do that step first. Okay, and so then lastly, all we're going to do here is we're just going to set both of these equal to zero and solve for x. So we would do x minus 4 equals zero, and we just solve the equation for x. So we see that we have min minus 4 here, so we want to add 4 to both sides of the equation. Okay, and negative 4 plus 4 is going to be x, and 0 plus 4 is going to be 4. I'm going to draw an arrow here, move this over. We said that x equals 4. And then we're also going to do the same thing with this over here with the x plus 3, 3 over 2. So we would set that equal to 0. So x plus 3 over 2 equals 0. And we're just going to subtract this from both sides, right? So we get this plus here, so we'll just subtract it from both sides of the equation. And so 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 gives us 0. And then 0 minus 3 over 2 is just going to give us minus 3 over 2. So x would equal minus 3 over 2. So the two solutions to the quadratic equation here would be x equals 4 and x equals 3 over 2. Or it should be negative 3 over 2, that's right. I'm sorry, x equals negative 3 over 2. Okay, so that's how I would do it. And this might seem like a lot of steps, but unfortunately factoring is going to be a lot of steps. Um, but it does not really going to take you that long, especially the, the main way to save time is focus on this step here. So for the purposes of the demonstration, I listed out everything that I could think of up top of my head that would multiply together to give me negative 24. And then we kind of worked backwards from there. And once we had all these pairs lined out, we did, you could do a trial and error until you saw that negative eight and three would add up to give you negative five. But if right off the bat, you can just come up with negative eight and three that multiplies together to be negative 24 and adds up to negative five, you can save the step of writing all these out. But I think it's helpful if you have like a blank out on the test and you can't think of anything and you got a factor. Just list all the things that will multiply together to be this number here, negative 24. And then from there, just use, just start doing additions, add up both of the terms up and see if they give you that B term, which was negative 5. And then from there, what you're going to do is you just, you get your pair, you get your negative 8 and 3. And then we just look at our A term. Divide them both by the A term. Simplify if possible. So that's what, what I did here. We did negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. 3 over 2 is, is just, we'll leave that in simplest form. And then you're going to do x and then minus that term and then plus that term, right? And the reason that we did x minus 4 was because we had a minus sign here. And then we did x plus 2 thirds because we had a plus sign here. And then you just set this x minus 4 equal to 0, x plus 3 over 2 equal to 0, and then you just solve for x, and then those are going to be your two solutions, and that's the that's really how you do it. Okay, so let me clear all of this junk out here, and I'm just going to put my thought process up here. I typed out notes for you guys, and so you can add that to your notes if you want. Um, but really, this is just going to come from practice. And so, like I said, it might seem like a lot of steps, and that's because it is. Factoring is kind of a pain. 
Um, it really is, there's no other way about it, but it really doesn't take that long to do once you've got it here. So here's some instructions here if you want to put these in your notes. And again, these are these are just kind of my terms and my thought process here for writing this out. So you'll definitely want to keep these in the context of the video. The first step is always multiply the first and the last number together. Find a pair of numbers that's going to multiply together to give you that number that you found in step one. Also add up to the, your B term, which in this case was negative five. Then you divide each number in the pair by the A term, and then you simplify if you can then write an x and then plus or minus each term and again that's going to matter if one of those terms that you found in step three is going to be negative then you would do x minus that and if the if one of them is plus you would do x plus if they're both plus you would do x plus one term x plus the other term then you just solve both equations for x and you got it you're good to go all right so if you found this explanation confusing let me know down below i'll try to clarify try to help you out but this is how you do it uh it doesn't get much simpler than this this is how you factor and this is going to be really important to know how to do so hopefully you like this video give me some feedback down below let me know what you think please give me a like if you like this video that's way i'm going to know if it was helpful for you or not and please subscribe you won't miss any more gd math problems of the day thanks guys and this problem comes right out of my GED Math Champions Guide. Uh, you can get 50 free GED Math Practice Problems and Solutions down below. I'll put the link, and you can get that on my website. Thank you.